Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for our witnesses. And uh, just, I'm excited. It took a long time to get to this hearing. Uh, it's taken a long time to get to draft text. And, you know, I wish everyone could understand all of the, the legislation. We can explain it for everybody, but we can't understand it for everybody. Uh, but I appreciate that so much innovation is happening in our country. I hope we can keep some of it here and uh, that we can get this legislation done. I've had bipartisan legislation on this subject since 2018, um, the Token Taxonomy Act. It's been fully bipartisan for years. And I just think how many of the calamities that people point to that have gone wrong could have been prevented or solved if we had done our job as Congress and provided legal clarity? Uh, so, you know, uh, Mr. Garrison, you know, there's a saying, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But should whether something's a security or not, should that be in the eye of the beholder or should it be pretty clear to everybody, this is a security, this is not? It should be very clear. That would provide certainty that would allow businesses to operate and investors to do so in a protected manner. Yeah, and so I think, you know, the point of a bright line test is incredibly important. Uh, and it should be clear for the investors, for the uh, innovators, it should be clear for the regulators too. Uh, and, and, you know, even Mr. Gensler can't decide whether Ether, after all this time, is a security or is not. Uh, we just had him in April in the hearings. He couldn't answer the question. So if the existing framework and existing laws are, are fully adequate, why can't the chairman of the SEC answer that? Uh, it'll tell you it's not clear enough. And we spent a lot of time here talking about um, how things could be treated as not securities. But, uh, you know, could it be that somebody wants to create a token that does represent a security? Yes, and that, that does occur today. Right, and so uh, when you think about the framework that we're putting together, it, even if in the case is, oh, well, the existing law, you could possibly find a way to do it, couldn't we create a market structure that would be more clear for everybody? How would you register uh, a token and make it a security and be fully regulated as a security? Absolutely. There's nothing preventing the SEC from uh, updating the regulations to allow for tokenized equity securities or stock or bonds. Yeah, I would add there's nothing preventing Congress from doing that either. Uh, and, you know, so one of the things, too, that uh, we talk about is the importance of um, self-custody. So, uh, you know, Dr. Shaher, um, you know, you think about some of your observations uh, that, that you've made. Uh, you know, privacy is an important uh, protection, but when you look at people who looked at FTX, there was clear fraud. Um, the people that had self-custody, they used it to, use uh, the platform to be able to conduct a transaction, then they offloaded the custody of that, they were protected. So could you highlight how important self-custody is? Absolutely. Um, the failure of FTX was a failure, not of crypto, but of traditional custodians. And um, the decentralized exchanges that performed much of the same functionality as FTX did not fail and in fact survived quite well through market up and downs. Yep, thank you. So I think it's just incredibly important that we protect self-custody, my Keep Your Coins Act does that. Uh, and I hope that we can get to that kind of principle in, in both the stablecoin bill and uh, the market structure bill. Um, I want to get to stable coins, but I think it's important to address something Mr. Himes said. So, Mr. Sexton, the uh, commingling limitations, uh, I don't think he actually applied correctly because there are, in current law, due to Dodd-Frank, differences in how we treat futures versus swaps uh, in terms of funds. You can't commingle with house funds, but you can commingle with uh, the funds of customers. So, when you think about um, legally separate operating uh, commingling frameworks provided for swaps under Dodd-Frank. Would you please explain how that works? There's uh, different frameworks with regard to uh, asset and, and the uh, protections of those assets uh, uh, with regard to swaps uh, and uh, the, the segregation accounts that we have in, in the futures world. So it's, um, it's very, it's complex. It's pursuant to the CFTC's regulations and um, the, um, when you have a customer seg account on the future side, generally we say that you cannot commingle the house, but um, the house can top that off though with sufficient funds to have excess funds in that seg account also to make sure that they uh, at all times have sufficient funds to have pay off uh, liabilities to customers. Yeah, so I mean that's existing law, so it's not like this is some loophole that creates some exception, it's just meant to capture the existing law and existing framework. And 
you know, as much as I would love to get to the stablecoin market and the importance of it, I'll have to submit some questions for the record on that. My time's expired, and I thank you all.